when Margaret and I first went to the Philippines, we didn't, we didn't, uh, we went through a real serious culture shock. We'd been, quote, successful in ministry in the United States and India and other places, and yet now we're in the Philippines and we're stuck in a little town in the middle of nowhere. And, uh, and we went through, uh, we had no money. Uh, the senior missionaries had the funds and for, it was a long story, but we, we went to a place we had nothing. And uh, we woke up in the middle of a typhoon one night, Margaret was ill, I got a medical book, began to look at it, she said, oh, she has appendicitis. <laughs> what do we do? I go running next door, where's a doctor? Oh, there's a doctor like you, meaning Christian doctor, down this road out in this little place called Malawan Lawan. And, uh, and uh, so I put Margaret on the back of a scooter. She's got appendicitis right in the middle of a typhoon. And we're going at 4 o'clock in the morning, going down this dark road, trying to miss the potholes. And uh, we came to this little village, and uh, we found, uh, I saw a man with a, with a, trying to get his care valve out from the storm. And I asked him, where's the doctor? And he pointed over this little house. and went over and knocked on the house door and the door opened and, and I couldn't see anybody because the man who opened it was extremely small. I looked down and saw this man, Dr. Santiago. He looked at me and smiled and, and uh, reached in and grabbed us and pulled us in out of the storm. And I said, Doctor, my wife is ill. He examined her, gave her a blood test, found it. she's got appendicitis, I have to operate now. And uh, he operated on her and saved her life. Uh, he was so short he had to stand on a box. I held the lantern, gave her a spinal, and operated her. And I think, Margaret, would you tell the rest of the story about God's grace in that whole thing? Typically in the Philippines, when you get sick and go to the hospital, you bring your own helper to take care of you. So Doug stayed there. The doc, they didn't have a, uh, it wasn't a hospital, so the doctor cleaned out a little storeroom he had to make a private room for me instead of putting me outside with the rest of the patients who were just on um, little makeshift beds that had a little thatched roof over the area to protect them. So I had my own special little room. They put in a bed for Doug and they kept me there for five days. They fed Doug, and, and that was different because all the patients and the helpers brought their own food, and the, the family or whoever was caring for the patient would prepare food for the patient. So they fed me, they fed Doug, took care of us, and our whole attitude during that time towards Filipinos changed. Up to that point, we were getting fed up with the constant knocking or coming to our door asking for handouts. These people were so poor that they, they were coming to us for that. Well, in a sense, in, in a very little way, we were all of a sudden like them. We were in a situation where we didn't have money and how were we going to pay this doctor? So when Doug went and it was time for me to go home or go back to where we were staying, um, Doug said, Doctor, um, I don't have any money right now to pay you, but here's my ring or watch or whatever. And the doctor said, oh, you know, sort of, whoa, no. He said, we're just so thankful for you who have, who have come here to minister to my people that there is no charge. And through that, God, God showed us, I think in a new way, what the worldwide family of God was all about. We, um, we had looked down on the culture that we were living in, and um, God revealed to us, I think, our prejudice that we didn't even know was there until, as it were, our cup was bumped, and then what was ins out inside spilled out, and we were able to deal with it then. And um, God changed us 
and gave us such a love for Filipinos that, you know, that's like home to us still, even to this day. Whenever we go back, it's just such a wonderful experience to meet again with our brothers and sisters in Christ who are different skin color from us, but who love the same God, the same Christ that we do. Several years ago, I was uh, speaking at a large church in Manila, and uh, I was preaching on Colossians chapter 3. And I came to the phrase, you know, you know, five things to put to death, six things to put off, seven things to put on. And one of those things to put on, those of chosen of God, therefore put on heart of compassion, kindness. When I got the kindness, I used the, I, I told the story about Dr. Santiago. And I told that story and uh, what had happened just before the service, uh, I was down in the front row of this church, about, you know, about uh, two or 3,000 people, and uh, they had a greeting time where you would stand up and greet the people around you. And I stood up and I looked to the right and there was Dr. Santiago. I had not seen him in 30 years. And uh, when we knew him, he was not married. He had gotten married, had children, and two of his daughters who had become doctors were there with him. He was an elderly man now. He was sickly. He was in the hospital in Manila. The doctors had gone and taken him out of the hospital because they had heard I was speaking at this church. They brought him to the hospital. And they brought him to the church. And I saw him. And of course we greeted and it was a wonderful reunion. Well, later when I was preaching, and I got to the place where it says, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, I used, I told the story about Dr. Santiago. And I said, because of the kindness of this little unknown doctor from the middle of nowhere of the Philippines, because of his kindness to us, changed our whole attitude from one of wanting to leave the Philippines to wanting to stay and, and love the people. And uh, because of him, we stayed and ministered in the Philippines. And I said, I haven't seen him for 30 years until just a few minutes ago. And I pointed at him. And 3,000 people stood in standing ovation. And people ran to him and hugged him. It was a wonderful, you could not have planned this by Hollywood. It was such a moving experience. And realizing that because of the faithfulness and kindness of one little person, many people had been blessed in ministry over the years through the faithfulness of this one man. 